Hi, my Sunday night movie this week was One, Two, Three. It's uh, something of an unusual choice for me. It was uh, a 1961 political satirical comedy with an incredibly complicated backstory. Um, it's based on a Hungarian play. It was adapted by Billy Wilder and his regular co-writer, I.A.L. Diamond. Directed by Wilder as a follow-up to his two very sort of sophisticated, urbane comedies, Some Like It Hot and The Apartment, both of them masterpieces. So with this, he wants to lean more towards a European farce. Our main character is the head of Coca-Cola's operations in West Berlin in 1961. The film states very specifically this is pre-war Berlin. Um, he's expecting a promotion any day soon to a head of operations in Europe with a new uh, office in London where his family can settle down. But his boss tells him that he has to babysit the boss's daughter, a tearaway who's got herself into all kinds of trouble, and he has to make sure that she stays put, and if so, then the promotion will be his. So she gets taken in, she has a nice time, and all, all seems to be going fine, until it turns out that every night she's been slipping over the border into East Berlin and has been courting a, a communist revolutionary, played by German actor Horst Buchholz. And now they're married, and our main character has to <laughs> try and get around this problem of the boss's son-in-law being a communist before he arrives in town and jeopardises our main character's career. And as you can tell, I can't remember the main character's name. The main character is, however, played by James Cagney. Uh, this was Cagney's last film before he retired, his second to last film, because he did a, another film 20 years later, Ragtime. The film was apparently an absolutely miserable experience for him and for the production in general. Uh, shooting in Berlin was interrupted by the construction of the Berlin Wall, which meant the production had to decamp to Munich. Um, Buchholz did not get on with Cagney at all. Cagney hated him. Um, it was a difficult, troubled production. So it doesn't really surprise me that it's actually quite enjoyable. That kind of tension behind the scenes lends itself very well to uh, creativity. So in the latter half of the movie, where uh, the the boss is on his way. Cagney has to frantically groom the reluctant and extremely loud and obstreperous communist into being a potential son-in-law to a big business. Results in Cagney having to jabber out pages and pages and pages of speeches as he's ordering all these materials, all these you know, suits and 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 order all this food and order, and get that man on the phone, the one who tends the, the, the toilets in the in the in the Tempelhof tube station, who used to be an account, because we're going to have him legally adopted. I can imagine this working on stage brilliantly, and there being a huge round of applause at the end of that scene of <laughs> the Cagney's character, having to just reel off three or four pages of text at top speed. It's an extraordinary scene. And much of the film works because it's it has that tension, it has that pace. There's a car chase because there's also uh, Russian bureaucrats who are interested in in uh, having Coca-Cola distributed into the Soviet Union, which Cagney thinks will be the, the crowning achievement of his career. And they wind up trying to bribe them with Cagney's secretary. And then there's, there's cross-dressing because his assistant has to pretend to be his secretary. And his assistant is a, a thin, wiry man who may or may not have been in the SS, which comes back later in the movie. Um, it's a fast, frenzied film, very different from The Apartment and um, Some Like It Hot. It's, the title seems to just come from the fact that whenever he's ordering things, Cagney will bark out, one, two, three, and to get people to move. Um, there, there's gags all the way through about the German character where the people in the outer office will always leap to attention whenever Cagney walks in the room and he has to tell them to sit down because they're so used to being drilled. Um, and he even tells off his assistant for clicking his heels all the time. Some of it felt a bit mean-spirited, but it's, it's humorous enough and the German characters are portrayed as characters in their own right and not just as a bundle of stereotypes for it to work. Even the Russians are portrayed not unsympathetically. Um, and the communist ideals are not ridiculed exactly, but the the, the son-in-law is ridiculed for his ext extreme devotion 
to his convictions, shouting and yelling and preaching at every possible opportunity. Um, I enjoyed the film quite a bit. Uh, it seems to turn up on great movies classic every so often. James Cagney was very enjoyable. Buchholz is genuinely pretty funny as an angry communist. I would recommend it. It was a bit of a surprise, but yes, one, two, three, five out of five, but it's very good. <laughs>